Since I was a little girl, I have been fascinated with ribbons. I love them on my dresses, in my hair, and when I was a baby, my mama said I would not go to sleep at night until I had a silk ribbon in my hand to hold. When I had Joanna, everything she wore was just covered with ribbons. It made me feel that I had dressed her correctly when my little girl wore ribbons. We're going to share some ribbon techniques by machine with you. It will hopefully inspire your creativity to see how easy it is. And you know, that's one of my favorite words. So let's get started and let the fun begin. You are going to just love this blouse made of handkerchief linen and it has just the most fun use of ribbons, all different kinds of ribbons just strategically placed. Now, what is that strategy? Any strategy you want it to be because remember you are the artist and you're having the fun with the sewing. The collar has wonderful ribbon pieces on the fabric before the collar is constructed. Out here on the body of the blouse, the shoulders and coming down the blouse front, there's a piece of lace, a piece of wide ribbon, a little bit of decorative stitching. Now not machine embroidery, just decorative stitching. The, some of the ribbons are turned under flat. Some of them go into the seam. Some of them do not. This is so cute. The little pleat on the bottom of the blouse even has a ribbon tucked in and there's a wonderful machine scallop along the bottom this blouse the back is so cute and so much fun I just had to show it to you do you see the ribbons are just placed and also some lace not just ribbons once again when we come down to the bottom the little peekaboo wide green ribbon peeks out from the little pleats in the blouse now this is just as easy and fun as I have told you it is now look at the ribbons you may have some pretty ribbons at home if you have a nice ribbon stash but if you don't go to the store and just have fun getting all kinds of different ribbons just maybe sort of in the same color family this is a beautiful piece of green handkerchief linen and as you can see the linen actually has the grain lines where you can see them so you can even cheat a little bit knowing where to place your ribbons because you have your grain lines all right now some of the ribbons you might want to turn under in little point some of the ribbons you might simply want to turn back straight either way it's wonderful then you use either a, just with a big needle not a wing needle you use either your pin stitch or if you just have zigzag on your sewing machine you can certainly zigzag these down. I'm so happy to have as my guest today my friend Marlis Bennett. Marlis Marlis is an education consultant for Bernina of America and Marlis welcome again to the show. Thanks for having me. This is a fun 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 technique but there's some things you need to know about your ribbons before you begin. When you choose your ribbons, one of the most important things is that they all need to be pre-shrunk before you start. Okay. And the trick to doing that is using an iron set for the, the fabric content of the ribbon. So if it's a cotton ribbon, you can have it very hot. If it is a rayon acetate ribbon, then you need to make sure that you have it, the temperature toned, toned down just a bit. Use a lot of steam and go over your ribbons, holding that iron on the ribbons, and you will watch them shrink. One little tip, those ribbons with metallic in them will shrink a lot more than the rest of them. Oh, I did not know that, okay. And as was stated, you just pin them down. I go ahead, pin them down. Some of them I put points. I make sure all of the raw edges are either folded under or they have been covered by a ribbon. To make the point, all you do is fold it one way 45 degrees, fold it another way, put it under an iron, press it, and then there is your point on the end of the ribbon. And then you're ready to begin to the sewing process. Now what I've done is I have selected a pin stitch on the machine. And it's really easy to set your pin stitch up. I use an edge stitch foot. At, on the garment, I just use a white 80 weight thread. The reason I use the white 80 weight thread is because it blends in with most of everything that I do. What size needle are you using? I am using a size 100 top stitch needle. I don't use a wing needle, and the reason I don't use the wing needle is because you're going to be sewing into a ribbon. If you use a wing needle on the ribbon, what happens is it could damage that ribbon in the process. You don't need to use a stabilizer underneath what you're doing because you've got the ribbon as your weight, you have your linen fabric, and you just sew your uh, ribbon down. Follow, with the edge stitch foot, you can put your ribbon along the center guide on the foot 
and if you have a machine where you can change the stitches, you can move your stitch over so that the stitch will fall directly behind the guide. It's really a simple thing to do. Also, many times I don't even have to test. I look at the screen on my machine to see where the stitch is on the machine in relationship to the needle and I can just begin to sew. There is one other little thing that I have done and you can see this here. I've got a little pin underneath here. Let me take that out. Is I have taken the width of the bite down to about a 1.4 width stitch width. I leave the settings about the same and then I just go ahead and sew all of my ribbons down. I have to do all of the edges and you would start with the ribbon that is at the back and then move to the ones at the front. Here's one piece that I've already finished. I started with the green ribbon. I came in next with this ribbon, covered it with this, the blue ribbon that you see here and then put the white ribbon on. And that really is the, the way to construct all of it. The, the collar was just strips of ribbon. So, uh, and then I did a little bit of decorative work on the buttonhole. I used a good stabilizer underneath the buttonhole as usual, used one stitch and had it just repeat one time and sewed it in a different direction on each end of the buttonhole. Before you cut them open. Before I cut them open. Oh, now that is a really cute idea, too, just to give that extra little added designer it touch. Is. Well, Marlis, thank you so very much. And Marlis has some wonderful sewing inspiration ideas for you. Marlis, I love the fact you've even used ribbons on this wonderful Christmas tablecloth. Well, ribbons are so versatile, you can use them anywhere. The tablecloth has embroidery designs that are from a collection that has designs that stitch tassels in them. So these are tassels done with the embroidery machine. They're clipped after they're finished. There's some applique work on here. In, within the design, the large design here has some sheer fabric that shows through. And it was just a lot of fun to be able to use it, the ribbon on the tablecloth. And so pretty. And and this beautiful pillow in the happiest colors. <laughs> it is a very happy color. It's very, very bright. The ribbon is a wire edge ribbon that's been gathered to create the circle. And the rose was done with a ruffler on the sewing machine. Oh, it's just beautiful. And this, talk about happy, fun, fun. That is a little tea, started its life as a tea towel. The tea <laughs> towel has, um, it was then embellished with, with ribbons, the same technique that we used early, uh, earlier, except that I used a monofilament thread in there. I added a, the ribbons to hold the handles and added a couple of, I mean, added a zipper for the closure. Now, you know what, this, this uh, blouse has the most interesting story. I cannot wait for you to tell our viewers about it. Well, not every everybody has time to construct an entire garment all the time, and I love to go find linen blouses and then remake them. This was actually a challenge. They, I was sent a bunch of ribbons in six inch lengths and I placed them, the same technique that I just showed you, placed them on the blouse. I uh, covered the sleeves, cut off the cuffs because it had long sleeves. I did a scalloped edge around the bottom. And why don't you show the back? Love this, it, I love it. This is where I used the cuff that was on the blouse, covered it with ribbon, did some tassel embroideries over the top of it. And it's a brand new blouse ready to wear gathered in the fullness. Is that cute or what? I just have had more fun looking at this. Every time I look at it, I find something new. It's got uh, 17 different fabrics are what I used in wow. here. There's about five of them though that have been done with the embroidery machine. Your embroidery machine is a great source of fabric for this type of a project. This, this is using craft stitches. This is a technique called photo snap where it takes a picture and change it, changes it into a monochromatic stitch out. I've also added some ribbons over here to create some of the blocks. And then there's a lot of machine decorative stitches on here. I also used um, a creative consultant built into the sewing machine to let me know how to work with all the different fibers that you can find in this vest. And this has how many fabrics in it? 17 different fabrics in Did this you vest. get them all at one time? No, I have a built up in my resource center. <laughs> oh, you're a resource center. Well, uh, we're commonly known as a stash, yes. is that correct? <laughs> so you did not have to go out and purchase when you got ready to make this fabulous, fabulous No, I did Just went hunting around, Marlis, mm -hmm. I love it. And next, Marlis has some really fun scrapbooking ideas for you. Oh, Marlis, I can't wait to see that 
wonderful son of yours and see all the wonderful things you've done. Well, this first scrapbook page that, I, that I'm going to show you has got my baby. He is my baby. It's hard to believe. This is Michael, and he's quite an energetic child. Uh, he's 23 now, for those of you that want to know that. And I used just a very simple thing for a title. It says, A Child Of, and then I wrote out character. And it's, it's that he's charming, humorous, athletic. And it goes on. I failed it. I picked a, uh, chose a word for each letter of the word character. I wrote his name out with the sewing machine letters. I used sewing machine stitching, just one stitch to hold everything together. Use the buttonhole stitch to button sew on stitch to sew the buttons down. I created the entire background page with various strips of fabric and put them together with a very uh, decorative stitch on the machine. And here's our second page, that, the one that we're actually going to work on. This is a picture of my mother-in-law with her two new, uh, newest grand, great-grandchildren. This happens to be my grandchild, Allie. Um, I, it's got a very simple title. It has lace. The page background was very antique looking. So it was really a lot of fun to do. And it's a very simple page to create. Now, how, how many of us do not have buttons in our stash and pieces of lace, lace that we could use to create a page like this? Now, the pay, original page was created with a decorative paper, but you may not be able to find a decorative paper. Most scrapbook paper is solid colored. How would you do something uh, to put the grid work on there? I use a ruler and just placed it down on the scrapbook page and then drew lines on each side of the ruler. This is how simple this is and got my grid onto the scrapbook page that way. Then it's time to lay out your lace and all I did was cut lace, start, you know, you got it, it works better if it's starched um, and laid it out in a crisscross motion. Make sure you cover your lines. There's a little tip. I use an embossing tool instead of a pencil. That way it just gives me an indent when I press down on it instead of using the pencil so oh, I don't have to cover great that up. Idea. Once you have them all laid out, all of your pieces laid out, you want to make sure you use buttons to hold them in place. I use a button sew on foot and I put the little shank and move it in the up position. That way it does not create a shank on the button because you don't need it. You're not putting it through a buttonhole. I am also did a little bit of sewing. This is a curved stitch along the edge of some parchment paper with the title on it. And when you're finished, all you need to do is place the pictures. Oh, let's get it the right side up. Place the pictures where you might want them on the page, creating the look that you want for your scrapbook page. Marlis, thank you so much. Those are just wonderful ideas, and I always enjoy your creativity. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> and now I have a home decorating project for you. You know how I love the word easy, and you know how I love beautiful things. Well, this pillow falls in both of those categories, and it has a fascinating technique involved with it that it's very, very easy. If you look at this beautiful pillow, which is done in, I'll tell you, it has three layers. It's burgundy, silk dupioni, um, and it has actually a layer of little threads, and we'll give you a little hint right now. Those little gold lines that run through there are actually done with little gold threads. We'll show you how to do it in just a minute. And then it has a silk organza on top of it. And it has a wonderful, just a big bias piping uh, on the edge, and that's all there is to this pillow. Let me turn it over to the back so you can see that it also is buttoned. It has the little casing and it's buttoned on the back. Okay, now this is easy to make. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do the grid. Now, I've got the silk organza right here. The silk dupioni has a surged edge so it won't uh, ravel. Then the grid is drawn on the silk dupioni. You would use a wash away marker, although we use a permanent marker just to make it easier on the show. Then the silk dupioni is put on top and then I am going to use a tearaway stabilizer for my sewing because the decorative stitching is kind of a heavy decorative stitching. Now here comes the fun. Okay. Let me pull up this corner. I'll be unpin it and pull up the corner so you can see what we have here of the silk dupioni. Then there are just little cut pieces of thread, this gold metallic thread here. And what we actually did, I think I have some cut pieces over here. I just cut some pieces and then just put them around underneath the silk 
organza. Then you pin it down and remember those lines we just drew that grid? You're going to use any decorative stitch you would like on your sewing machine and sew along those lines and you're sewing through the silk dupioni, the uh, organza, and of course you're catching those little gold pieces of the metallic thread as you do your decorative stitching. Now here's what it looks like after the decorative stitching has been done. Sewing, and you see those pretty, can you see those just little gold swirls in there? There was no rhyme or reason to the pattern, just the gold threads were cut and placed on the fabric. And then any kind of pretty decorative stitch you would like, this is just straight stitching for purposes of showing you, but a pretty decorative stitch is really nice. Then the back of the pillow is very simple to do. You simply get the pieces, fold them back, overlap them and then here are the buttonholes you put in your buttonholes and then your button that makes a really nice finished back to a pillow then you'd have to cut your bias piping or the bias strips in order to make the piping and this is kind of fat piping that we're going to use so you'll cut fat bias strips and here's the bias piping that has the heavy cord in it. And the piping, by the way, also has the silk dupioni and the organza. And then you pin the piping and then stitch the piping. And that makes that beautiful piping uh, edge that went around this pretty pillow. Okay, let me pull the pillow back up now that you've seen how you do it. And this is the finished pillow with just a little decorative stitching, or you could use any kind of embroidery you wanted to. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to put someone's name, or if you wanted to make this an anniversary pillow and put Martha and Joe, except you probably wouldn't want to put Martha and Joe if your names are not Martha and Joe. But this could be a pillow for all occasions if you wanted to do some um, machine embroidery on top of it. But I would love it just like it is, and it's really a nice tailored pillow that would go maybe in your den or in your living room. And since I love burgundies, and in my living room I have burgundies. I think I know exactly where this pillow is going. And next I have some hand embroidery for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Sheldrick. Beverly is a regular contributor to So Beautiful Magazine. She has taught needlework all over the world, and she teaches regularly at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion in Huntsville. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's always great to be here with you. Now, Martha, today for our viewers, I'm going to teach just a very simple primrose. It's, it's the English wild variety, so it's a bit thin. It's not the lovely big fat ones that you're used to in this country. And it really is very, very simple. Then I, but there's several things that I want to teach our viewers today. So here we go. Now, you can see that they are on this lovely little tea cushion. You'll find there's just one here, and there's another one over here, and there's one somewhere down here. And really, they're just a straight ribbon stitch. What we are going to do, however, is we're just going to have a little bit of bounce in here. So I'll just go through the wee steps with you. You can see here just a perfectly plain, straight stitch. It's not hard on the ground. You can see how I can put this underneath it. And here, of course, we've got two. We're going to continue on three, four, and last of all, five, which so many flowers seem to have, just the five. Of course, a little French knot in a slightly darker color there. Uh, I would normally do these in a much paler color, which you can see on the tea cozy I have done, but for the purposes of the show, I've made these a little bit more rosy than they would normally <laughs> be. So here we are. Now, you will see, what I want to, to show you is so many girls I find have difficulty keeping the ribbon flat. So if you pull it back like that, you'll be able to take it over your finger like that. And then as it goes through, I'm just going to put this in there, but I want, just miss that. So we'll just bring that back. Can you see how if I was to take my wee stick and just put it in there. There's lots of bounce there. And then if you put your thumb on it, don't worry, it will spring back. It, you know, people find nervous because they think they're going to squash their beautiful flower. <laughs> but not so. It doesn't work that way. So you can see how there I am and I've got that lovely little point. I've got this lovely bounce in there. 
Now you will see that of course here I have, I've already got the first four in there. So we're just going to put the last little one in there like this. And remember of course that bounce like that. So here we are and down we will go. And I haven't got my finger there but I do know just I can pull it like that and it'll be just fine. Now here we are, we're at this section here. You will see that I've got my thread already ready. And because this is, I want it to have a nice uh, bouncy little center, I'm going to wrap this two or three times. I did three. Sometimes I've even done four if I want something that's really prominent. Now Martha, the secret of these, and, and it really is a secret because if you stop halfway taking the needle through, then you will find you can pull that thread so that the knot is actually sitting there on the ground. And so that when you take your needle through, then you haven't got something which looks more like pistol stitch or is waving around in the breeze. And you've got it just sitting just right there exactly where you want it to be. And it really is important. You know, sometimes people will complain, you know, then they're French knots are just waving around in the breeze. <laughs> and that's the secret. Make sure that the knot is sitting on the ground, first of all. Before you pull the needle Before through. Before you pull the needle that's through. fascinating. Now, you can see here that I've started to put in my stem, and it is just a, an outline stitch or a stem stitch, whichever you want to call it. And the secret, of course, is to go right back to where you started. Now something that I find a lot of girls get a little bit confused, they never know when to put the thread above the needle and when to put it below the needle. Now there really is a very simple uh, answer to this. If you remember that if the curve goes this way, the thread goes above the needle. If the curve goes this way, then the thread stays underneath the needle. It just makes it so much easier. Okay. And of course, once more, we're just, just the normal little leaf. Um, I think on this one, I just put a little straight stitch and like this, just take it through like that. And that's all you need to do. Put a little clump of them. Uh, you can see if you look here, here we have this clump sitting there. So, you know, you've got something which is really very, very simple. And I find that often by use of color, you can suggest, although it's the same thing that you're doing, you can suggest a totally different um, flower. Well, Beverly, thank you so much for these, this wonderful lesson in silk ribbon embroidery. And now I have a piece of my antique clothing collection to share with you. This little dress has the most interesting sewing details I want to share with you. Now, actually, if you'll look at this sweet little dress, it's organdy, and it's really French sewing on a budget because there are no trims, and it only has straight stitch on the sewing machine. Okay, the collar is wonderful. It has a slight scallop, as you can see. It has a little bit of a scallop and three little ruffles. Now, I'm going to hold up the collar so you can see how adorable. This is just a little high yoke dress with plain little sleeves and they've been hemmed with a straight stitch on the sewing machine. Now, if you'll notice, the collar is a little bit of a scooped neckline and there are no openings except this little dress just slipped right over the head. Isn't this the sweetest little skirt? It has the little scallops that actually the scallops are on the, uh, the skirt on the bottom of the skirt is a little bit scalloped, but the scallops are just stitched onto the skirt. Two rows of ruffles and then the bottom row of ruffles was stitched onto the straight skirt and then it was just trimmed away. I do think you'd like to see the back just to see it's exactly the same as the front. And this little girl just slipped this dress on over her head and it's very easy to make. And again, that's sewing on a budget because there are no trims whatsoever on that dress. I want to thank you so much for coming to visit with me in my sewing room today. I hope you've had fun. Won't you come back next time? Mm -hmm.